Hi, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live. I'm Jamal J. Bathia, Product Marketing Manager for Cisco Secure Email, and also guest moderator for this week's chat on extending email protection and integrations beyond the gateway. We're going to demystify some things for y'all today. So before we get strapped in, this is a quick reminder that we'll be taking your questions live at the end of the show. Check out the Cisco chat ha hashtag on Twitter or post your questions in the comments if you're watching on the book, aka Facebook or YouTube. Right on. So joining us today is Robert Sherwin, Cisco's senior technical marketing engineer. Robert has over 20 plus years of combined network, data center, and security experience, including the past nine years with Cisco Secure Email. Robert has represented Cisco as a distinguished speaker at Cisco Live US, Omega, and APJC. Robert is a pro when it comes to helping customers and partners find the most up-to-date solutions and information for technical email problems. He's just been killing it. He's also a dad, and he delivers expert-level dad jokes and Mickey Mouse pancakes to his two beautiful daughters. You know, thanks for joining us today, Robert. You know, it's good to see you. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Excited so, to do this. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. So I think the first question everybody wants to know is, what's the secret sauce to the pancakes? Can you give it a secret? No, I, I can't do that. You you said it, it was uh, Mickey Mouse pancakes, so that's uh, <laughs> it's, it's hidden information. Right on, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. On. Okay, well, we'll get to it in a second. All right. All right, okay, folks, uh, so let's sit back. Um, let's get comfortable. I'm going to walk you through um, our short agenda and pass it over to Robert so we can get this uh, Cisco chat started. Robert, you, uh, you all set? Yep, I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, right on, man. All right, so on today's agenda, you know, we're going to be covering a lot of things, but we're going to make it and break it down really simple for you. We're going to make sure that you understand it, and we're going to hope you walk away feeling like you got some information so you can take, to your, take with yourself and into the world and you can talk about how cool Cisco secure email is. But um, in our agenda, you know, we're going to discuss the integrations between secure email and secure X. Uh, we're going to showcase the phishing workflows and uh, we're going to share how secure email is the only security product to bring user intelligence to the platform. Don't try me. You know, our competitors aren't on our level. So, Robert, the floor is yours, sir. Great. So yeah, like Jay said, uh, you know, we're talking about email security. Obviously, you know, within our portfolio for email security or Cisco Secure Email, as we call it now, uh, we we have five main products. You can see them on the screen: uh, Gateway, Cloud Gateway. Same thing when it comes to you know what it does: Cloud Mailbox, Phishing Defense, Domain Protection, Awareness Training. Right? Um, you know, that's what we have, we bring to the table from the Security Business Group. Uh, but, you know, the main thing we're focused on today is just the Gateway and the Cloud Gateway, and it's specifically around that SecureX. Um, from the gateway, we know that the integrations, you know, from email, we've grown this product over the past uh, 20 years that it's been around. Um, and, and as it's come on, you know, to life, we, we take in Microsoft 365, Google Workspace or Gmail, um, and then anything over SMTP, right? That's how we get the mail in. Um, after that, we go through, we've we developed you know, external threat feeds. We can go through and take third party data, go through and integrate that into our uh, filters, if you will. Uh, we go through with authorization and administration, two-factor authentication and single sign-on from Okta, Duo, ADFS, things like that. Uh, Logging-wise, we can go through with Splunk and AWS, IBM QRadar. This is how we go through and syslog or send it over to a SIM. And then finally, with API, we've gone through and developed a way to go through and in and out of the appliances. We can go through via the API calls. We can go through for administration and configuration. But the main focus of our talk today that Jay and I are going to be going through and discussing is going to be focused around SecureX in that top right box that you see. So threat grid, secure endpoint, threat response, and, and more. And that's what we'll be talking about. So, so Robert, uh, real quick, a uh, lot to unpack with that real quick. Just got a yep. few questions that's kind of top off my head. Uh, so does an administrator need to be running a particular version of Async OS uh, for their email environment? And then um, I got another question, but how would you answer that one first? Yeah, um, you know, the, the particular version, um, you should be, yeah, but mo more than likely, you know, I think a lot of our customers sh should be running it already. Um, so we've gone through and one of the pre prerequisites has been that you're running at least 12.5 uh, for the email gateway, uh, the, the email 
and web manager. Um, and then on um, 13.0, you know, we're newer for the uh, ESA as well. Uh, we started this out in 2019 uh, with SecureX. Back then it was just threat response, but over the time it has grown, SecureX came to the forefront and took over the way that, you know, things were managed. Hence, you know, why we're called Secure Email now. Um, but we've gone through after that and expanded into the rest of the security portfolio threat response as well is in there. Um, but yeah, as long as most people are running, you know, like I said, at least 12.5 or greater on the, the web manager or at least 13.0 or newer on the email or the gateway side, um, they should be good. All right, you hear that email admins? Make sure you have your versions up to date. Um, you mentioned on-prem, so like, so the admins with on-prem appliances, can they also take advantage of SecureX? Yep, they sure can. It works exactly the same way. Like I said, right now today, uh, we don't have any differences between the gateway and the cloud gateway. Um, so it's going to operate the same. Um, but the only caveat will be the orchestrator part. We'll get to that towards the tail end of our discussion today. Um, but with the orchestrator, you just need to go through and run things a little bit differently. Um, we, we won't probably get into that as full, but there is that one small caveat that, that throws out with the orchestrator. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, then if you're new to SecureX, well, let me ask you this. Um, if you're new to SecureX, how does an administrator add in their uh, their email environment? Is that something that we can see? Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm going to start with. Like I said, you, you right, laid it out right. perfectly. Uh, we're going to go through some building blocks. You know, some people might have seen this already, but the, the module integrations, obviously, that's where you get started, right? So let's go through and take a look. You know, when you log into SecureX and you went to your integration modules, what we're looking at here would be the, the opening screen to that. Um, from there, you can see the Cisco products laid out. This is everything within that, that business group, the security business group that we bring to the table today. You can see AMP for endpoints, firepower, stealth watches there. But the main two things that we're talking about, you know, with our discussion is the email security appliance and the SMA. Um, like I said, we went through that, that security renaming, so it's now secure email. So don't get fooled. It, you know, the ESA, the email security appliance, or the SMA, the security management appliance, those are still the two things that we're, we're focused on. So if you're used to those, um, if you have those up and running, this is where those modules come into play. Now, typically for us, um, our cloud customers, they have an SMA, that, that's that centralized piece where our reporting, our tracking, and our quarantines go to. We want you to enable a module for SecureX there only. Um, and the reason is that, you know, because the, the adding the ESAs doesn't really bring any benefit to the table because um, the security management appliance being that centralized hub um, goes through, pulls everything over, and takes care of that. But if you're a customer and you are running an on-prem appliance or you only have maybe you know two emails uh, security appliances and those are separated geographically or something like that, you know, by all means you can turn those on in order to to get the same use that we're going to talk about today out. Okay, so if so cool question. All right, check this out. So can you add modules at any time? Like does it affect anything in production or or uh, like a previous use of SecureX. So, like, can you walk me through that briefly? Yeah, no, it won't change anything. Uh, we'll, we'll go through that in just a second with, with the first demo I've queued up. Um, but, you know, as you go through, you know, there's going to be times when you buy new things, you turn new things on, you might turn them off. Um, and even if we talk about the third party modules here coming up in a few minutes, you can go through at any time, turn those on. It's not going to go through and affect your production data or your production environment at all. Basically, you're just turning on the new access keys from SecureX to that product so really that's what the data is tied to and then each of those modules operates individually for the the data that it's bringing to the table for securex as well and that sounds slick man let's see let's see this uh let's see this demo real quick okay so yeah, the first one we have queued up is the uh, demo of adding the secure email module. So for this, I'm going to use an on-prem virtual appliance that I had uh, spun up. And what I'm going to do is go through, and I'm going to go through the network into the cloud settings. What I'm doing is enabling the service from our appliance side. I'll go through, turn it on, and enable it. You can see once you do that, it unlocks the uh, regions. You can see we have three regions, APAC, North America, and Europe. You go through, you choose whatever's closest to you, you click it and enable it. Once you go through and you commit and you uh, save your settings, it's going to go through and request that you put in a registration key. So we'll give it a few seconds to get the service talking. I refresh the screen, and there I need the registration token. I jump back over to my SecureX. I'll go to the administration side. 
and I'm going to go through and add a new device. So the Manage Devices screen goes through and takes us into the Security Services Exchange, and that's where all of your information is stored for each of your appliances. So this could be something even more than email, uh, but for me, since I'm email related, this is what it is. So I go through and I generate my token, bring it back over, and I'm going to put it in and hit register. It's as simple as that. So at this point, our module is turned on. We'll go through. It's going to request that. And you can see the deregister button. So if you wanted to turn it off, you could. From this side now, back to the SecureX side, you can see ironport.example.com. That's the appliance I just added. After that, we can go through and go to the module. I'm going to put it so in. I'm going to search and find it. And I'm going to add it in. Yeah, go ahead. So it, this is awesome, and I, I love how you just work your way through this demo. It's seamless, very quick, very easy to get into. So how long does it take to sync email web manager to SecureX? Yeah, once you go through and you finish what, what I just did there, so the, the demo is almost done. It's going through and it's going to build out the dashboard. Um, the dashboard is going to be that information piece that's pulling over from the module that we just turned on. Um, you can okay. see it's obviously going through and refreshing, um, but usually it's going to take at least, you know, maybe five minutes or under to get that communication set up and anything that's in between synced over. Um, it's usually, you know, dependent upon, you know, how much data is there. So you saw that I put in 30 days for my um, uh, time frame. So if I if yeah. I put in 30 days and I have a busy appliance, obviously there's going to be a lot more there. Um, so it, it, it might take a little bit longer, but. Once you're there, usually, you know, five to 10 minutes, you should be good to go. You'll start seeing things come over and fill this dashboard and your values will start changing after that. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so like, let me just put myself in a voice. Uh, let me put myself in the shoes of, uh, you know, some of our customers out there. Let's take an email administrator, for example. So what, you know, you know, now that the module is enabled, what kind of benefits does like uh, email administrator earn after this integration's happen? What is, what is it? Like? Yep. Yeah, that leads us to the second part of the you know the demo of this is exactly that. Um, so what what it is for us is a click menu within Secure Email. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look and see you know what that has turned on for me. So for my user interface, we're looking at the new user interface. We're going to come through. I'm going to look at my advanced malware protection report to start with. I'm going to go to my file analysis, and you can see right there, there's a little right-click menu that appears next to the SHA values. You can even see the little red skull that's associated with that one. So this is data that's already going back and forth over API between SecureX and my appliance. So you can go through and right-click and be able to integrate and uh, actually control that data and what it's doing between the security management appliance or your ESA back to SecureX. So each of the modules that you have turned on is going to be what's available in that menu. Okay. One of the other things I'm going to look at is the mail flow details report. So here I'm looking at domain names. It could be domain names or IP addresses, either of those. You can see that click menu is still there. And if you notice, we switched over and now it's talking about domains. Before it was SHA values, but now that we're talking about domains, we can start investigating. What I've done is I said investigate this in threat response. So it takes me over pulls that information and you can see it built a relations graph when it comes to you know what's going on, what it's looking for. From here, that same right click menu that we saw on our appliance is available from within threat response. So we can do the same actions based on whatever modules are turned on. I have a malicious IP address, I have a malicious host, I have some other suspicious stuff. The colors will vary based on what's in that relations graph, but we can go through and interact after that. But let's go back and say that, you know, this here, threshold.com. This is something that we want to investigate. It's something a little bit suspicious, or maybe it was missed. We want to go through and block this. If I'm using our Cisco umbrella, I can go through and automatically block this from the DNS level automatically from my from within that click menu. So I could be on the ESA, SMA, or within SecureX and add it into there. Stop all traffic coming in that would be coming from threshold.com. Easy as that. Easy. That sounds really easy, and it's just just a click away, right? Just one yeah. click, yeah. stop all email traffic, and it's tracks. It's not getting in. It's not getting out. It's just right there, right? Yeah, exactly. And like I said, it doesn't even have to be email related. You know, if you go through and you have other products that's turned on, um, you know, within the security portfolio, you know, firewall, umbrella, web security, you name it. As long as those modules, they can go through and interact, share data, share action, share configuration, share, share the security, and that's what it's really after. So let's get dangerous for a second real quick. You know, I just want to kind of tap into your knowledge. 
uh, you know, are there next level integrations that SecureX has to tie into uh, to in, into the email integration? Is that something we do? Was that yeah. Like? It, it, it is exactly, um, you know, ever since, like I said, SecureX came to the forefront when we launched this at uh, Cisco Live. It was originally announced RSA in 2019, came out Cisco Live 2019, um, but it's really grown. Um, and one thing we've done is is developed that integration modules to use third parties as well. So not only Cisco, but we go through and you can see on the screen, we have various different, uh, you know, partnerships that we're working with. You can see uh, Akamai, Alien Vaults, you can see Cyber Cybercrime Tracker, Virus Total, all of these modules are available. So, you know, some of them are there. You can go through and enable them and use them. Um, but, you know, others of them requires, a, you know, a paid service maybe or maybe an API key. Looking at the ones for email, like you you wanted to know, you know, I've highlighted those, you know, Alien Vault, you can use it for the uh, open threat exchange or for us, it's external threat feeds. Um, you can go through Google, uh, Google safe links. Have I been puned? Um, is it phishing? Pulse dive, URL scan, virus total. These are all things that I've turned on and I've used and tested um, and they work great. And like I said, as long as you go through and you enable them, you'll see them in your click menu and you'll be able to take action based on the data you're looking at or based on what that module brings from SecureX. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about it earlier today and well, I mean, I've started Cisco maybe what, seven weeks ago. And, you know, there's a there's always a language barrier when you come on board with a, a new company. Um, and and one, one, one key term I, I, I read about and I wanted to get your take on it was what does Cisco hosted mean? What does that mean? Can you, can you kind of break it down to the audiences and, and just kind of explain what that looks like and what that means for us? Yeah, so Cisco hosted in this particular screen, what we're looking at is um, something that the module is hosted by us. So you don't have to go through before. Um, you'll see that it's split on the screen that there's Cisco hosted modules and then there's ones that are not. Usually for the ones that are not, you'd have to go and build your own relay or put a module in, maybe a virtual machine if you have AWS or something like that. You'd have to run that on your own in order to get the data to then sync up, turn the module on and then communicate with, with SecureX. Uh, the joy of what the SecureX engineering team has done with the C Cisco hosted is they've taken that away. So now we're hosting that little service for you directly here from SecureX to make it that much easier. So you'll see in just a second when we go into our next piece of turning on a third party module that you don't have to worry about a relay or anything else. You just put in your information, turn it on, and that module is there for you. Okay, while we're shifting over into that, that, that next piece, uh, what what is the cost, right? Folks are probably like, this costs some money. What what's the price tag, man? Um, it's it's you know you, most of these are, are available. If you have a paid service, you know, great. You can just go through, put in your information, access it. Um, some of these are free. Um, you know, I've gone through and used Pulse Dive, URL Scan, Virus Total. Those are free services that you can go through and enable to extend your knowledge or extend your you know data that you're looking at. A lot of people don't want to go through and you know rely just solely on Cisco or Talos. Um, and we can go through and you know maybe get a, a doctor's second opinion or a technological second opinion from these other third-party vendors all right right on man all right that sounds pretty cool so y'all hear that it's free the same <laughs> it's free I'm not, i i take free stuff all the time so uh what's yeah. next man yeah, let's take a look at adding them. I mean, it's just the same. We're going to go through and do the exact same thing that we did in order to get our data from our, our email email world into SecureX. We're going to do the same thing with that module. So you can go through and click on the integration modules. We're going to add a new module. We're going to choose you know, what we we're just looking at. For me, I'm slowly scrolling down, but I'm going to go through and let's say if I didn't have a URL scan IO. You can see I just click new module. It's just asking for my API key. Obviously, I'm going to have all that stuff set up ahead of time. I'm just going to pull it over from my service, put it in, and it's ready to go. And what it would look like if I went through and I searched for a URL now. So I'm going to do an investigation for my URL within there. You can see it comes back. My relations graph gives me all the emails, anything that was in those emails, subject, who it was going to, all of that other stuff. I was focused on that URL. You can see it's red, it's malicious. Uh, you can see I have a suspicious one here as well. But if I wanted to go through at that point, it's a matter of going through and selecting what I'm after and then selecting the module. I've highlighted the little area there. We have Alien Vault, uh, Pulse Dive, URL Scan IO. I click on them, it'll automatically take me over. Here I've gone automatically. I, all I had to do was click. It takes me to Alien Vault and says, you know, what do you know? 
you have this information in there. I can go through and click off a new pulse dive. So if I have that service turned on, it's going to go through and kick it off and run. It's as easy as that. And so you said a few things. You said free, you said easy. So now that we've got all, we know what threats are out there, we've already scanned, what's remediation look like? Yeah. So, you know, that's the big piece for us is is going through and being able to do something about an email that came into your environment. Uh, we went through with our 13.5 release. We introduced this uh, great new addition to the remediation capabilities called Search and Remediate. Well, we thought, what if we could take it one step further and integrate this into SecureX? So what we're looking at on the screen is just, you know, a highlight of threat response. We talked about that click menu. So if we go through and look at it from the mid perspective, mid is a message ID that comes in from our appliance. We can go through and actually initiate delete, a forward or a forward and delete. So as long as you go through and you have your account settings turned on and your email appliance is already configured for this, uh, you can go through and kick this off without even having to log into your appliance, all from SecureX from that right click menu. And we'll take a look at some of that coming up in just a second. But as soon as so you click one of your actions, happening. yeah, go ahead. So this is all happening in one single pane of glass, right? This is just happening in one place Correct. at one time. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to pivot anywhere. It's just right here for you. No, nope, cool. it is. Yeah. So once you click one of your actions, it's going to go through. It's going to pop up a little T timer in the right hand corner and tell you success. Um, as long as that API communication is working between SecureX and your environment, it's going to kick it off. What it looks like from behind the scenes, if I wanted to take a look at my mail logs as it's live and going through, um, it would go through and make the API call. We can go through and see a batch ID. It's highlighted from the screen, but that batch ID is actually doing the remediate job. Um, and it happens, you know, I don't have the demo queued up, but if you've seen me talk before, if you want to see it some other time and go through it and live demo it, uh, but it happens, you know, split second. Uh, it, it does take no time at all. It just takes two clicks and you can go through and remediate it from your environment. Okay, so now we got some remediation, right? Um, there might be different types of remediation. So what's the difference between like a mailbox auto remediation? That's a thing, right? And then mailbox mm -hmm. search and remediate. What is is are those are those two things? And what's the difference? Like, what does it look like? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is the SMA screen. This is our reporting screen. So obviously we kicked off that batch job, right? So we went through and ran something. Um, but the difference between mailbox auto remediate, which you see here on that tab, and then mailbox search and remediate is auto remediation happens from our AMP side. So we have AMP, which is our file reputation and our file analysis. So anytime an attachment comes through, it can go, we can say, hey, have you seen this before? What do we know about it? And then what do we do about it? If we don't have an answer, we can go through and sandbox it. That goes over to the file analysis piece, at which point ThreatGrid kicks off, goes through, sandbox it, gives it a score, and then sends it back. Is it good or is it bad? What should we do with the email? However, the email administrator has it you know, configured. Um, at that point, let's say that my email from me to you went through the attachment. It was clean, right? But let's say, you know, six hours later, enough of the world has seen that the attachment I forwarded to you, Jay, by accident, I'm so sorry, um, but it's bad. So it's going to go through and it's going to kick off what we call as a retrospective. Um, so it'll go through any email appliance that we have that's registered. We'll use it like a phone book. We'll call it back and say, hey, we're sorry, this email is bad. That's automatically going to go through and pull it out if I have it configured from the inbox. It's going to pull it out automatically. So that's different from the mailbox search or remediate because we're going through and actually manually kicking off the remediate piece. So we don't have to wait for a, uh, a retrospective alert. We can go through and actually kick off the remediate whenever we want. And that's what SecureX does for us as well. You can go through and do that action from the click menu and take care of it. Sounds like there's some autonomy built into that. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, I think just showing off right now. But what else you got? <laughs> yeah. So let's go through and look at it. So, you know, we'll look at it live. So yeah. what I'm doing is I'm starting off with my investigate window. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to choose my mid. So I see all that information that I showed just a second ago on the screen. But what I'll do is I'll go over to the mid information. You can see I had multiple messages that had this, but I'm just going to choose one for the demo. You can go through and I can see my actions. I'm going to go through and choose to delete. So I'm going to go up, click on it. And like I said, you know, a matter of seconds is going to go through. It's going to kick off the success initiate. T timer is going to click on the menu. And I tell you, it, it goes through and it pulls it out of the uh, Microsoft side. So if I went back and I looked at my reporting at this point, 
I can go and look at the remediation report. That's what we saw just a second ago on my static screen. I'm going to click on the mailbox search remediate piece, and I'm going to see either if I've done it manually, it'll go through and list it, or if it's that batch ID that we saw from the mail logs. I'll pull it up. You can see here, success. It went through in no time. Message was sent at. It went through initiated at a certain time. We can see it was initiated by uh, CTR, which is the threat response. The highlighted, I pointed there because the message read, it was blank. So that meant that nobody opened it. Here, I went back to this other report to say message read. You can see there's an envelope. And that's the difference between the two is it was the email opened or was it not? That might be important to some administrators. But we can go through and let's search for this message ID from our tracking. So if we went through at tracking, I'm going to click last seven days. I already have the mid there, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to say search. So I'm going to see what exactly happened to that mail. My message tracking tells me it's remediated already, which is great. So I can go through and see where it went through our pipeline. If I click on more details, it tells me everything in the world that I ever wanted to know about that message. But at the very bottom, I've gone through and I've updated. You can see it, it, the, it was delivered the day before, but the day after when I remediate it, we're going to tack that in there as well. URL details, there's that bad URL um, that you know we started off with, and that's all recorded and available. So that's you know, a quick run at, at what it is. That's a really quick one, and uh, you know, I, I I think about our customers. I, I think of email admins, and um, you know, I'm I'm just in love with them. You know, I want to make sure they're taken care of, and um, I think an uh, email admin, you know, just looking at this data, you know, the, the next question they have for you, and they'll probably and I'd probably have the same one is like, you know, what are you going to use this data for? You know, it's consumed by SecureX, and you know, if somebody wants to utilize it for private intelligence or threat feed, so. What does that look like? Is that a thing? Can you? Yeah, it is. You know, obviously, you know, getting that data from your email environment into SecureX is one thing. Um, but what can we do with that data now is is exactly that. Um, and that's what, you know, intelligence and feeds is, you know, for us. We can go through and now uh, we have a new release that's coming out in about two to three weeks time. It's our 14.0.1 release. What that does is brings to the table the ability to use our external threat feeds. Um, external threat feeds is the capability to take that third party vendor or something outside of your email world and actually take action against it based on whatever indicator of compromise you're after. So SecureX already has all that information. And you saw that we went through and we looked at, you know, malicious URLs. We looked at domains, IP addresses, files, right? Those are our indicators of compromise that we can take action on. Um, but from there, we can go through and take our SecureX to the next level. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look. So this is demo of threat feeds, right? So yeah, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a search for another um, event here. So I launch into my Cisco threat response and I'm looking for sendme.bitcoin.com. I'm going to see if this has been in my environment at all. So it's going through and it's doing its search. I see a relations graph. I can see that URL in an email that was sent, but it's not suspicious or malicious. This is, you know, this might be a bad thing. So I might want to go through and actually take care of this so my environment's protected. What I'm going to do is create a judgment against it. I'm going to go through and mark it as high and red. And I have this bucket already created for my threat response indicators from email. And what that is, is, is exactly that. I'm, I've got an external threat feed bucket that I'm going to put this in. I'm going to call it as malicious. And I'm going to go through. It's going to be there for 30 days. And I'm going to mark it as red. My reason, it was a missed URL. So I, I was told that this was bad from a uh, phishing URL. So I went through and added it in. I hit create. In no time, you see my little red skull popped up there next to the URL. If I refresh the screen, I'm going to go through and see that in the relations graph as well. So now I've been, you know, I went through and I did my due diligence. I made that malicious URL. But what else can I do with it? So I can go through and I can investigate it more if I wanted to. Um, but, you know, I want to go through and make sure that it's in my environment. So if I'm in the intelligence tab, if I went through and looked at judgments, it's obviously private. This is something I did. We can go through and see this and any other URLs that my environment, maybe another SACA operator or somebody has added in. That's all of those. That's where they live. And what it's tied to is our indicator. And our indicator is just that, our threat response indicators for email. It's a bucket that I created. You can see all of those URLs are tied. And here is a URL, which is what I'm going to use for my threat feeds in my email world. So I took that information back on my email security appliance i went through and i looked at my threat feeds manager and you can see i have this 
already there. But if you went yeah. through and you broke it out, you know, that URL string that we had from AMP, we can go through and put it in exactly like that. So now every 15 minutes, I'm going to pull, in addition to my third-party feeds, I'm going to pull and make sure that there's nothing from SecureX that's coming across that I want to be going through and minding. Nothing's getting past SecureX, man. <laughs> so we went through and we actually, you know, had it, you know, running. Uh, you can go through here, look at the external threat feeds reporting page. Let me expand this out for 30 days. So that way I can see, you know, what has happened if it's actually been triggered. And you can see here my CTR feed, 12 messages have been caught. So at that point, if I needed to go through and do some further, you know, looking to see, you know, what are those 12 messages? What did it catch? How useful is this? I could click on those messages, look at the message tracking data, make some analysis, maybe make some tweaks as far as, you know, what's going on or add some more. Maybe I need to go back and clean it up. All of that will be there for my reports. Got it. All right. That's awesome, man. So um, let's get into integrations real quick. Um, you know, sure. this, is, this is really, this is, I would say, can integrating my like cloud gateway or gateway help with efficacy issues? Is that a thing? Yeah. Um, you know, so I told you at the beginning, you know, we're going to go through building blocks. I know you're new. So, you know, this hopefully you've learned that we've gone through and, you know, enabled the thing to start with. We've gone through and seen what are we doing with that data for the second part. Now let's bring it home and talk about, you know, what can we do even further? And this is all still based on that data exchange, right? So you said it, you know, can we go through it and build this efficacy or monitoring wise, you know, how can I take it to the next level? So this is done with that SecureX orchestration piece. So if you were logged into your SecureX dashboard, you can see the third tab up there is orchestration. So what we can do is log into it, take us over to the orchestrator, and you go through and you set up your environment. And this is a little bit more advanced. This is not, you know, something that's easily done if you don't understand scripting and regex language and whatnot. But you need okay, to plug in. Yeah, you need that's to plug in. I right. just saw something. I, I saw someone that was like, you know, I saw workflows. Can you, can you walk us through those workflows real quick? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, so workflows are a way that the larger component of the orchestration works to go through okay. and run a script right on for like traditional programming so it can be a simple one it could be very complex and that's what this is on the screen this is our threat response uh we're looking at those retrospective alerts so it's very simple to go through and see that uh, but we go through and look at another one which is the phishing investigation workflow so this wait, one what, is what, are, what, what yeah. were the retrospective alerts what, what was that so retrospective alerts are exactly what we talked about a few minutes ago with AMP. Anytime AMP you know, okay, it is, gotcha. is malicious, it'll go through and do yeah. that. Okay, but right. you can see here that this phishing workflow is, is huge. There's lots of steps in here, and there's lots of interaction between SecureX, my email environment, and even beyond. So I can go through and kick this off and have it go through and monitor a work, uh, an email box, and it'll go through and tell me if a phishing event has happened. It'll go through and report it back to me by sending an alert or an email notice. I can even tie it into Microsoft Teams or to Cisco Teams as well via WebEx. Uh, you can go through at that point and you know get your notifications. If you went to our SecureX uh, GitHub page, all of the workflows are listed there. We'll go through and uh, expand it out workflows, but you can see we have Cisco Secure Email. That's that investigative retrospective alerts page. Uh, but there's also an email section where the phishing investigation lives. Um, and if you check out our security blogs on cisco.com, um, I also talk about there's another one that's available for DLP. Um, so, But if you went through there, you can go through and look at the configuration all the information you need to set up the variables, the keys that are needed. Uh, but if you went through one other way from orchestration is to actually import that workflow. So if you went to import, you can go mm -hmm. through it. If you have your Git um, credentials in there, you just click on workflows. You choose what you were looking at as far as you know what you want to bring across. All of these are pre-built. These are free to use, and it gives you an idea of getting running into this orchestration world. Um, you hit import. I'm not going to do that because mine was already there, but I can clone it. So if I want to make any changes to that, I can go through clone it, and that way I can jump into that workflow, make changes, maybe make it a little bit different. Maybe I want to remove some of the subsets um, that was nested in. Um, it's all for you. 
Um, you can even go through and build out your new one. If you go through and you are great at programming, you know your programming languages such as Python, you understand regex, you understand what your into and out of should be, um, you can go through and design your own workflow in order to go through and take advantage of all of these different modules that we talked about that SecureX takes advantage of, um, and then go through and actually start protecting, you know, not just email, uh, but like I said, your your firewall, any web gateway, um, you you know, you know, you name it, it's going to be there from the orchestration side. Okay, so we went through a lot today, but I think we hit on a lot of key pieces. Now, what happens if someone wants to read up on some information uh, about SecureX or it's just a secure email? Um, do we? What are, where are we sending to them to? Resources? What do we got? Yeah, um, that's not what I wanted, but we'll go. To the resource page um, so you know take a look i have tried to you know list out some basics that we're after here um, so we have the email security page obviously start off with securex that'll go through and tell you about you know the the services that are there and provided from cisco today um, those orchestration docs that's sxo underscore docs if you go there um, you can get into anything you want to when it comes to the workflows and setting that up I have specified the email workflows themselves. You know, we talked about the secure naming. You know, why is it not email security appliance anymore? Why is it now the Cisco secure email gateway? It's mm -hmm. there for you. And then finally, docs.ces.cisco.com. That's, you know, something that me from the BU and my team, we go through and write best practices guides. We push those out there. And it also gives you a jumping point into a little bit more of Cisco. Love a place to jump off at, man. For real, um, this has been great. Uh, what's coming? What's coming next, man? What's up? What's going on? Yeah, so um, you know, this fall, you know, stay tuned as long as uh, you guys at the the Cisco chat side, you know, want us back. Um, we have a brand new uh, Cisco email security or our cloud gateway. We have CES version 2.0. We advertise that during Cisco Live. Um, we have finished um, our beta part, uh, but our new introduction to this will start in the fall for us. So look for this probably around October timeframe. Uh, we'll be happy to come back and show you, you know, what we have for that and what's coming in the cloud. Um, also for, for the SecureX side, you know, we're going through, we have that other product that we looked at from the start of our discussion, um, Cloud Mailbox, that's one of our new products. Uh, Office 365 tie in there via journaling uh, your email and API, uh, but SecureX will be available for that tool um, here come the fall as well. And we'll go through and look at, you know, some features and some turn ons for that as well. Hey folks, uh, just remember you don't have to remember all this. We'll have to we'll have it available available for you uh, in the chat in a second. Which reminds me too, we're we're also going to drop a, a demo uh, link uh, for those folks that want to take a hands-on approach with what they just saw online. That'll be in there. But uh, before we do that, or that might just show up right now, um, we want to dive into some questions. This has been awesome. Like seriously, Robert, you've done so much in covering this landscape, and um, we have a lot of questions. So. Um, uh, how do you feel about answering a few of them? Yeah, sure. Lay them on me. All right, man. I got you. All right. I'll try to so... answer my best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I got you, man. These are some tough questions, but you're the guy for it. Um, so Sean on YouTube asks, when is version 14 coming to CES customers? So 14.0 for our cloud gateway has started rolling out. Um, I it should be available to most people. If it's not there today, um, feel free to open a support case, ask them to roll it out to you immediately. Um, I know it is available. Like I said, we do have a 14.0.1 release that is coming out in um, August timeframe, um, but that will include that, you know, taking the external threat feeds and being able to consume our SecureX data. There's some other small fixes and tweaks to that. Um, and then later on, we have 14.1. Right now, that is penned in for probably October, November timeframe, but we're still working on that. But 14.0 um, should be available for you today if you're a cloud email uh, gateway user. Um, and then if obviously, if you're an on-prem person, you can uh, you know upgrade to that as well. All right, Sean, I hope you hear that. Uh, you know, put a, put a support case and we got you. Um, next question uh, is from Mario on LinkedIn. Uh, he was just asking, uh, you know, what is the difference between Secure Email Premium and Cisco Umbrella SIG? Um, it seems both share some features and dashboards look similar. What do you got to say to Mario? 
Um, well, I mean, for Umbrella, I mean, it, obviously, Umbrella versus uh, email is is two different products for us, right? Um, I hope the dashboards look similar. Um, I know that we've been working very hard for the past three to four years on the next generation user interface. We saw that come to life um, about two years ago, but we've expanded. And that's what CES V2 is, right? It's bringing to the table to our cloud customers um, first the brand new configuration and driving experience for the gateway, right? Um, but as far as Umbrella, versus email goes to me um, you know umbrella is more web security built off of uh, open dns so that's more of that dns layer web security layer um, email itself we're going to be a gateway um, so mm. we're going to sit in front of anything that you're delivering mail to and we're going to actually go through and do the mail processing right that's going to be your administration uh, written filters all the security services from anti-spam antivirus amp virus outbreak, et cetera, is going to happen there to that mail flow. Um, so that's something that Umbrella is not going to bring to the table. Um, but, you know, from the Umbrella side, they can go through and they can look at traffic wise for anything, but you can, you know, look at it for DLP and some other subsets that they offer from their modules within them. All right. Good question, Mario. Uh, getting into this next one, John is watching on Cisco.com. And he's asking, like, is this strictly an enterprise uh, product, or is this something that he can use as a small business owner? How intuitive, how intuitive is it to use? Yeah, um, you know, we, we do offer this to anybody. So we have, you know, small business, medium, large, we have university, we have government, um, cloud, you name it, you know, from from the way that we go through and deliver the email product, we have it being, you know, cloud. Um, that's the transition and the way that we're seeing things going is all of our customers, you know, are really filling up our cloud data centers. Um, but we also offer the on-prem hardware and the virtual appliance as well. Um, and really we offer, you know, different sizes when it comes to that too. Our 100 series is, is geared more towards the small end, which might fit in for you. Uh, medium size, you know, 300, and then extra large size is gonna be the 600 series. Um, but really, you know, it depends how, what you're looking for in the mail gateway. You know, what's your ailment? Are you looking to, you know, stop spam, virus, malware, URL links? You know, it's gonna go through and depend on that. Uh, most of our customers find that cloud uh, works for them, and that can be small to large to government enterprise. Like I said, you know, it really depends on, you know, how much you need to commit to it. And then also, you know, the price tag that fits into your budget for your security. Um, so, but yeah, if you're, if you're not running it today, you know, reach out. We do have a 45 day uh, free trial or, you know, proof of concept, proof of value um, that we can do for the cloud product. Um, and then we can also do the same thing for a virtual appliance. We can turn it on. You can get 45 day license to go through, try it out, see if it fits for you. All right. Well, if I'm John, I'm getting hold of my account manager right now. So John, get a hold of your account manager, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right on. So uh, Mario's coming back at us again. He's, he's coming. He's got some more questions for you. Ready? Great. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, he just wants to talk about data loss prevention. Uh, is it included in remediation? So our data loss prevention, um, that's more outbound. Um, so when, when you go through and look at data loss prevention for us, that's going to be kind of an outbound mail policy. Uh, we're going to go through and turn that on and try to prevent mail from leaving. Um, really, when it comes to remediation, remediation is mails that have entered in via inbound, right? Um, now, obviously, you can go through, you, you can't remediate from, you know, a mail going out um, from, from your environment. So if, you know, I send an email to, to you, Mario, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to sit there and pull it back because because once it leaves Cisco, it's it's gone off over the internet to you. Um, but yeah, DLP, we go through and we offer that for the outbound. We have about 180 uh, pre-classifiers that are built into DLP, uh, but we also offer our Cisco uh, secure email encryption. Uh, so this used to be called our res product, uh, but we can go through and encrypt the traffic uh, as the mail is sent based on a keyword or if it's triggered from a plugin. Um, that way it'll go through and encrypt the mail. If it's data you know, sensitive for whatever reason, it goes off to you, Mario, you would go through and get it. And then you would just have to log in with your username, password to decrypt and get that. Um, but remediation itself, like I said, is more of a inbound SOC operator when it comes to, you know, preventing um, some type of an event or a threat uh, from actually, you know, going through. Okay, right on. All right, we got a few more questions coming up. I think we're kind of nearing the end, but uh, let's just get these knocked out real quick. Um, yep. Let's see if I can uh, just get into this. 
All right, cool. This is from Abby. What's going on, Abby? How you doing? She's uh, she's on Cisco.com. Uh, she says, hi, how does integration between SecureX and Secure Email increase collaboration? Yeah, um, you know, it increases collaboration. You know, it's, it's a great question. Obviously, like I said, you know, it all depends on the modules that you turn on um, and that data that you're taking in, you know, exactly what are you looking for? Um, SecureX is great in the hands of, you know, an email administrator. If you're a SOC uh, security team, um, even if you're going through and just taking a look at, you know, what has happened. Um, collaborative wise, you know, like I said, you can go through and you can look at it from the connection level. Um, if, if you saw a domain or an IP address that was reported to you, or maybe you repetitively spammed by somebody, you can go through and actually block that domain. Um, so you're not only blocking it from email, if you have umbrella integrated, you can go through and collaborate, you know, obviously your rules and you can stop that mail based on the IP or domain it's coming from there. Um, if you went over your firewall, you can go through and integrate it with the rules. Anything that SecureX would go through and share the data with is where you're going to go through and get that collaborative uh, benefit from. Okay. All right. All right. Next question. Um, let's say email had a new exploit attached to it, right? So Cisco AMP doesn't have a file protection and file analysis. Now this is coming from uh, one of our members on LinkedIn. And uh, it's, so it's gonna clear AMP and go to sandboxing as it was just splitted uh, exploit in few emails. So um, it shall clear the sandboxing too. The retrospective alert might take about six hours but the time exploit is in the network. How does Cisco ESA or SecureX deal with it? Does that make sense? Yeah, if I, if I get it correctly. So we have a, an attachment that's in an email. Email came through and was delivered to the end user. So it might be a, you know, a zero day that we don't have a rule that Talos has written for, you know, Talos hasn't written a rule for, for our virus outbreak or AMP doesn't have an answer for it because it's brand new SHA that hasn't been seen enough. Um, you know, at that point, you know, how do we go through and deal with it? You know, we go through and we can take the action by going through and manually selecting that from that relations graph that you looked at from secure threat response. The security team, maybe they're reading about it on a blog or they see a news post about it. Sometimes at the end of our investigation within Cisco Talos, we'll go through and list out SHAs that are affected, right? You can take all of that stuff and inject it into your AMP for endpoints, or you could go through and build out your own SHA rule list on your email security appliance. Um, once those are enacted, you can go through and, you know, stop it fresh before any rules might have to catch up to it, right? Um, or you could go through actually and do that remediation process. So if you went through, you look for that SHA specifically in your threat investigation. It came up, it'll tell you, you know, how many email boxes have seen it, how many are there. So if you have AMP for endpoints, it can go through and actually automatically remediate that file for you. Um, you can go through and then click on the remediate button as well, take it out of the inbox and do away with it. Here comes the last question. Are you right. ready? I hope so. I hope you are. Here we go. <laughs> Crazy. I, I've seen you late to the chat. How well does the, the gateway you fight spam? Do you have statistics or something to show us? I think we might have something. What do you think? Yeah, I, I don't have anything that I can like grab out of magic air or from another presentation and pull across because the, the, I know the Cisco TV guys will beat me. Um, but how do well do we fight spam? Um, you know, we are a leader in the market. We do have the marketplace, you know, graphs to go through and show that, you know, we are a market leader. Um, efficacy is always a, a tough, tough question um, because, you know, everybody's efficacy issues are different, right? You know, no two customers are the same. If you check out our docs.ces.cisco.com, I did just publish a FSKC guide there um, this week, as a matter of fact. Um, but, you know, for, for us, efficacy um, really starts to, to play into, you know, how do we go through and handle the email from the pipeline, right? Um, email comes in, anti-spam gets it first, antivirus, AMP, all of these different engines, right? They do it in order. Um, but at the beginning of that, you know, we have a tool that it's the case engine. So that's the context adaptive scanning engine. Um, really, that's what picks apart the email and starts to identify, you know, different pieces of metadata that's channeled 
into our services. Um, each of the services does something different. Anti-spam obviously looks at the body, the subject, URLs, things like that to identify spam. We have gray mail that can kick in. Is it is it bulk social marketing mail, et cetera, right? Uh, we have AMP that goes through, identifies files that are attached to an, uh, an email. So all of this metadata, you know, is really what it gets after. Um, as long as you go through and have these services enabled, each of them is going to go through and do its best to stop based on rules or activities or threats that Talos has seen. Uh, but like I said, you know, every customer is a little bit different. If you are being targeted, um, if you have, you know, C-level employees that are targeted, if you have, you know, specific files, depending on what it is, it can be all different. Um, really, if you have efficacy issues and you check out my guide, uh, if there's something that, you know, is not working for you, obviously it's the same thing. You know, we want to help you out with a support case. We want to get us, you know, a, a submission from you to see what that sample is. What is it we missed? What is it that is not matching up with our rules? This is something new that's out there. Uh, we can have our experts from within Talent take a look at it and if need be it's a quick turnaround to go through and update rules push them out to all of our customers to go through and try to help alleviate um, but like I said you know efficacy is is always a, a, a to me it's a nasty word that I don't want to use and and I don't have pretty numbers to show right off the top of my head yeah, you know we're not perfect but you know at the same time we do have those numbers so we can definitely yeah. get those for you yeah, right, like folks. I said, you know, I work with the analysts enough and we go through and, and do, you know, Forrester and Gartner and, and Frost and Sullivan. You know, we have various, you know, interactions with these and we, we go through to try to, you know, line up against our competitors. Um, and I think each of our competitors will tell you the exact same story. We, we do our best. We try to help you out. Um, really, at the end of the day, it comes down to that ease of administration, you know, what the future looks like for the products. And, you know, I, I hope that we've tried to show you that today with uh, the SecureX integration. I think you did, man. You brought it home for us. Well, you brought it home for me to finish this up because we're almost out of time. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, we're going to wrap up here. If there's no more questions, um, I want to I want to thank Robert. You know, you've been great taking the time to demo this uh, integration for us. And thank you to our audiences for turning yeah, in. Thank you. This means a lot. This is my first Cisco chat, so I was kind of nervous. But I think Mine I did too. pretty good. I don't know. Yeah, right? We'll, we'll just see rookies doing things, huh? Uh, rookie of the year. Uh, be sure to check out the free tile. We got it down there in the chat. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll catch you on the next chat. Great. You Thanks, later. Jay. Thanks, everybody. Peace.